I am continuing my reading. What I'm doing in this series is to read through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I am reading in a chronological order of events, not according to publication or volume, so I will be skipping around a bit as I move along. We are continuing with Alma. We've been reading his final words to his three sons, Great Doctrine, in those chapters. Now we return to the narratives in chapter 43. At this point in the story, the Zoramites are mingling with the Lamanites and preparing for war, especially against the people of Ammon or the anti-Nephi-Lehi's, or, you know, being kind to those that the Zoramites have kicked out. This is in the 18th year of the reign of the judges, so this is only seven years. Not even, no, this is... This is in the 18th year of the reign of the judges, so this is only four years since the anti-Nephi-Lehi's moved into the area. Since they were given sanctuary by the Nephites. Now, because of these preparations for war, the people of Ammon, they move out to uh, the land of Melek to take sanctuary while the armies of the Nephites move into the land of Jershon to fight with the Zoramites and Amalekites. Not Amalekites. <clears throat> to fight with the Zoramites and the Lamanites. Now, the people who are kicked out of the land of the Zoramites, they join the army. And that is where we left it off. We now pick it up in chapter 43. It's again a long chapter, so I'll be reading the first 24 verses. Alma and his sons preach the word. The Zoramites and other Nephite dissenters become Lamanites. The Lamanites come against the Nephites to war. Moroni arms the Nephites with defensive armor. The Lord reveals to Alma the strategy of the Lamanites, and the Nephites defend their homes, liberties, families, and religion. The armies of Moroni and Lehi surround the Lamanites. And now it came to pass that the sons of Alma did go forth among the people to declare the word unto them, and Alma also himself could not rest, and he also went forth. Now we shall say no more concerning their preaching, except that they preached the word, and the truth according to the spirit of prophecy and revelation. And they preached after the holy order of God by which they were called. And now I return to an account of the wars between the Nephites and the Lamanites in the eighteenth year of the reign of the judges. For behold, it came to pass that the Zoramites became Lamanites. Therefore, in the commencement of the eighteenth year, the people of the Nephites saw that the Lamanites were coming upon them. Therefore, they made preparations for war. Yea, they gathered together their armies in the land of Jershon. And it came to pass that the Lamanites came with their thousands, and they came into the land of Antionum, which is the land of the Zoramites, and a man by the name of Zarahemna was their leader. And now, as the Amalekites were of a more wicked and murderous disposition than the Lamanites were in and of themselves, therefore Zarahemna appointed chief captains over the Lamanites, and they were all Amalekites and Zoramites. Now this he did, that he might preserve their hatred towards the Nephites, that he might bring them into subjection to the accomplishment of his designs. For behold, his designs were to stir up the Lamanites to anger against the Nephites. This he did, that he might usurp great power over them, and also that he might gain power over the Nephites by bringing them into bondage. And now the design of the Nephites was to support their lands, and their houses, and their wives, and their children, that they might preserve them from the hands of their enemies and also that they might preserve their rights and their privileges, yea, and also their liberty, that they might worship God according to their desires. For they knew that if they should fall into the hands of the Lamanites, that whosoever should worship God in spirit and in truth, the true and the living God, the Lamanites would destroy. Yea, and they also knew the extreme hatred of the Lamanites towards their brethren, who were the people of Anti-Nephi-Lehi, who were called the people of Ammon. And they would not take up arms, yea, they had entered into a covenant, and they would not break it. Therefore, if they could fall into the hands of the Lamanites, they would be destroyed. And the Nephites would not suffer that they should be destroyed, therefore they gave them lands for their inheritance. And the people of Ammon did give unto the Nephites a large portion of their substance to support their armies. And thus the Nephites were compelled alone to withstand against the Lamanites, who were a compound of Laman and Lemuel and the sons of Ishmael, and all those who had descended from the Nephites, who were Amalekites and Zoramites, and the descendants of the priests of Noah. Now those descendants were as numerous nearly as were the Nephites, and thus the Nephites were obliged to contend with their brethren even unto bloodshed. And it came to pass, as the armies of the Lamanites had gathered together in the land of Antionum, behold, the armies of the Nephites were prepared to meet them in the land of Jershon. 
Now the leader of the Nephites, or the man who had been appointed to be the chief captain over the Nephites, now the chief captain took the command of all the armies of the Nephites, and his name was Moroni. And Moroni took all the command and the government of their wars, and he was only twenty and five years old when he was appointed chief captain over the armies of the Nephites. And it came to pass that he met the Lamanites in the borders of Jershon, and his people were armed with swords and with scimitars and with all manner of weapons of war. And when the armies of the Lamanites saw that the people of Nephi, or that Moroni, had prepared his people with breastplates and with arm shields, yea, and also shields to defend their heads, and also they were dressed with thick clothing. Now the army of Zarahemna was not prepared with any such thing. They had only their swords and their scimitars and their bows and their arrows and their stones and their slings. And they were naked, save it were a skin which was girded about their loins. Yea, all were naked, save it were the Zoramites and the Amalekites. But they were not armed with breastplates nor shields. Therefore they were exceedingly afraid of the armies of the Nephites because of their armor, notwithstanding their number being so much greater than the Nephites. Behold, now it came to pass that they durst not come against the Nephites in the borders of Jershon. Therefore they departed out of the land of Antionum into the wilderness, and took their journey round about in the wilderness, away by the head of the river Sidon, that they might come into the land of Manti and take possession of the land. For they did not suppose that the armies of Moroni would know whither they had gone. But it came to pass, as soon as they had departed into the wilderness, Moroni sent spies into the wilderness to watch their camp. And Moroni also, knowing of the prophecies of Alma, sent certain men unto him, desiring him that he should inquire of the Lord whither the armies of the Nephites should go to defend themselves against the Lamanites. And it came to pass that the word of the Lord came unto Alma, and Alma informed the messengers of Moroni that the armies of the Lamanites were marching round about in the wilderness, that they might come over into the land of Manti, that they might commence an attack upon the weaker part of the people. And those messengers went and delivered the message unto Moroni. That's where we leave it for now. Just a few small notes here. This is the Nephites understand the situation. If they lose, they are going to be persecuted, killed, enslaved, all that stuff. The Zoramites, led by Zarahemna, their only goal is power. Now, Moroni, this is our first mention of Moroni. He just kind of appears on the scene here. He's 25 years old when he's appointed chief captain. We're not told exactly when he was appointed. But we do know that Zoram was chief captain when the Lamanites came and destroyed Ammonihah. And most likely, he was still chief captain in the 14th year of the reign of the judges, three years later, when they came up chasing the people of Anti-Nephi-Lehi. This is four years later, so we have somewhere in that four years Moroni is being appointed chief captain, which means he could possibly be as old as 29 now. I doubt it. I think he was just recently appointed. I think he is still 25, maybe 26 at this point. So he is a young man, and he is given full command of all the army. I'm pretty sure that he was a soldier under the command of Zoram, and Zoram at least nominated him to take his place when Zoram retired. I think he was recognized as a soldier in those earlier conflicts. And look, he prepares his people. It says arm shields, so we're talking about armbands, breastplate, head shields, so helmets. I don't know why they call it a shield exactly, but basically a helmet. And thick clothing, so they're not wearing plate mail armor. They're not like the uh, medieval knights. What they've got is hide armor, thick, clo thick clothing. This is padded armor. But, in addition to that, they do have a metal plate over the most vulnerable part, which would be the chest. And then they have the head and the arm, because the arm, when you're fighting, the arm is actually one of the, is the one place that gets hit more often than most anything else in combat. So, they're protecting the most vulnerable places with the best stuff. they got the metal to protect the most vulnerable places. In contrast, the Lamanites are all wearing a loincloth. The Zoramites and Amalekites do have clothing, but they do not have this kind of armor. And so they, remember, they, they're up in Antionum in the land of the Zoramites. The Lamanites all send their soldiers up there because their plan is to attack the people of Ammon in Jershon. But when they get up there and they're getting ready to do their attack, they find that instead of the people of Ammon, Moroni is there with the entire Nephite army ready to slaughter them. And so they say, nope, we're not doing that. And they try to sneak around south to Manti, but Alma reveals this, and we're going to get the battle going in the next reading, which we will do in the next video, so we will see you there.